Throughout our journey, we often find ourselves standing at crossroads, facing decisions that can shape our lives. We yearn for a sign, a signal from God Himself, guiding us towards the right choice. So, how can we discern the signs that God is saying yes to our next decision? Think about the Israelites during their exodus from Egypt. They were led by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, a tangible, undeniable sign of God's guidance. But in our daily lives, how can we experience such clear direction? I firmly believe that God speaks to us through His Word. The Bible, often referred to as the lamp to our feet and the light to our path, is a profound source of wisdom. When you immerse yourself in Scripture, you'll find that it holds timeless truths and unveils God's divine plan. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Imagine your life as a puzzle and God's Word as the missing piece. When you align your decisions with His teachings, it's like that puzzle piece sliding into place, completing the picture. It's a sign that you're walking the path God intends for you. But wait, there's more. The Amplified Translation of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22 delivers a powerful message. Without consultation and wise advice, plans are frustrating, but with many counselors, they are established and succeed. God often confirms His guidance through the counsel of fellow believers. When you seek wisdom from those who share your faith and they resonate with the direction you're considering, it's a profound sign that you're on the right path. Consider this journey like a treasure hunt, and God is leaving breadcrumbs along the way. His Word is your treasure map, and the wise counsel of others are those markers guiding you closer to your goal. As you decipher these signs, You'll find yourself not just making decisions, but co-creating your destiny with the divine. So, as you stand on the threshold of your next decision, remember this. God is communicating with you through His Word, and He's echoing His wisdom through the voices of faithful companions. These signs are His way of saying yes. Embrace them, trust in His guidance, and step forward with confidence. When you look back at your journey, You'll see that God was using your experiences, your decisions, and even your doubts to prepare you for something great. You are on a path paved with divine purpose, and every step you take is a step towards a future filled with His blessings. God's Word isn't just a book, it's a love letter, a divine message meant to illuminate our path. It's like having a GPS specifically designed by the Creator of the universe. When we're pondering life-altering decisions, consulting the Bible should be our first step. So, if you're wondering whether God is saying yes to you or your next decision, let's dive into how His Word can be the guiding light you've been seeking. Imagine you're planning a grand expedition. Before you embark on this journey, wouldn't you carefully examine the map to ensure you're heading in the right direction? God's Word is your spiritual map, guiding you towards a life that glorifies Him. When you're unsure whether God is saying yes or no, remember this. He'll never lead you down a path that contradicts His Word. His guidance aligns with His commands. So, when faced with a decision, open your Bible and search for His wisdom. Let's not forget that God's Word is alive and active, ready to provide you with the wisdom you need for every decision. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It's like a spiritual treasure chest waiting to be explored. Think of the Bible as your personal love letter from the Lord. It's filled with His promises, His guidance, and His heart. When you open its pages, you're connecting with the One who knows your past, present, and future. So, before you make that life-altering decision, immerse yourself in the scriptures. Seek out the verses that resonate with your situation. Let God's word speak to your heart and confirm his yes. As you delve into his word, remember the promise from Psalm 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. It's not just a light, it's a radiant beacon that will shine upon your path and reveal God's yes. In conclusion, when you seek God's approval for your next decision, remember that His guidance is intricately woven into His Word. It's your roadmap, your love letter, 
and your spiritual GPS. Don't venture into the unknown without it. Consult His Word, and you'll find that when God is saying yes, His Word will confirm it, guiding you towards a life that aligns with His perfect plan. When God says yes to your decisions, He lights your path forward. When you seek God's guidance in the choices you make, it's like embarking on a grand adventure, not knowing what lies ahead. But here's the beauty of it. When God says yes to your decisions, He doesn't leave you stumbling in the dark. No, my friends. He lights up your path in the most marvelous ways. Think of it as God playing matchmaker in the grand theater of life. Just like in dating, when you pray about your next decision and God nods his approval, you'll start seeing signs everywhere, just like sparks flying between two people in love. Imagine you're contemplating a relationship with someone named Ebony. If God is giving you the green light, you'll notice that Ebony's heart is open too. It's as if your energies align and suddenly the idea of dating each other becomes a shared dream. That's God's yes in action, my friends. Or, let's say you're considering taking things to the next level with Roberto. If God's giving you his blessing, you'll see him taking steps in the same direction. It's like two synchronized dancers moving to the same rhythm. Both of you eagerly stepping towards that beautiful destination called a relationship. What about those times when God closes a door? Well, that's a sign too. A crystal clear message from above. It's like God gently guiding you away from a path that might not be the best for you. It's his way of saying, my child, I have something better in store for you. You see, sometimes we're so determined to get what we want that we keep knocking on doors that God has firmly shut. We waste precious time and energy pursuing things that are not part of his divine plan. But my dear friends, when God closes a door, don't resist it. Embrace it. Trust that He's protecting you from something that might not be for your highest good. Now, let's turn to the Bible for some wisdom. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5-6 through 6 reminds us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. This verse beautifully illustrates how God guides us, lighting our way when we trust Him wholeheartedly. So, the next time you're faced with a decision, seek God's counsel. Pray, listen, and watch for those signs. When God says yes, you'll know it because the path before you will be illuminated with His love and blessings. But when He gently closes a door, trust that He's guiding you towards something even more extraordinary. Remember, my friends, when God says yes, He doesn't just nod. He shines His light upon your path, making your journey all the more extraordinary. Stepping stones God has placed on your journey. You know, the times when you're in the midst of a storm and the path ahead is shrouded in uncertainty. It's essential to remember that these trials and tribulations aren't roadblocks. They are the very stepping stones God has placed on your journey. Think about the Israelites wandering through the desert before they reached the Promised Land. They faced hardship and obstacles, just as we do. In James chapter 1, verses 2 through 3, we're reminded to consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So, when life's challenges come knocking at your door, don't be disheartened. Instead, View them as opportunities for growth and endurance. God is using these difficulties to mold you into the person He intends you to be. Now, let's shift our focus to that gentle whisper in your heart, that nudge you feel when God is guiding you towards a decision. It's a feeling of peace that washes over you, a sense of calm amidst the uncertainty. This, my friends, is divine guidance at its finest. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 assures us that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When you find yourself at a crossroads and that inexplicable peace accompanies your decision, it's a clear sign that God is saying yes. Remember, God speaks to us not just through the stillness of our hearts, but also through the voices of those around us. Seek wisdom and counsel from trusted sources for God often uses them to reaffirm His plans for you. When God gives you a divine green light, He orchestrates the unthinkable. 
Imagine you're at a crossroads, faced with a monumental decision that could shape your future. You pray, you seek guidance, and you wonder if God is saying yes or no. Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you that when God is saying yes, He's a masterful conductor of circumstances that will leave you in awe. Picture this, a beautiful symphony, each instrument playing a unique role. In your life's orchestra, when you're about to make a significant choice, God steps in as the conductor. He orchestrates people, places, and events in such a way that it becomes undeniable that His hand is at work. It's like when you're on a roller coaster and every twist and turn leaves you breathless with anticipation. God's yes is like that thrilling ride. You'll look back and realize that you couldn't have orchestrated it all on your own. Remember the time when you were contemplating a major career move and suddenly the right job offer appeared out of nowhere. Or when you were pondering a life-changing relationship and the perfect person entered your world. Those are the moments when God is saying yes. God's yes is not a magic wand that grants our every wish, nor is it something we should demand. Instead, it's a divine confirmation that aligns with His plan for your life. When circumstances align so perfectly that it's clear God is behind it all, it's time to trust His guidance. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, the Apostle Paul introduces us to his powerful principle of confirming witnesses. Just as witnesses strengthen a legal case, God often provides us with confirming signs to affirm our decisions, signs that can manifest through His Word, the power of prayer, an unshakable peace settling in your heart, an encouraging word from a fellow believer, or the wise counsel of trusted mentors. Now, let's dive deeper into this concept and explore it through a different lens. I like to call it unlikely circumstances. Think about a person caught up in a situation that appears to have no connection whatsoever to their life's plans. It's as if life has taken a wild detour, leading them down an unforeseen path. Yet, in the midst of this unexpected twist, they suddenly discover themselves aligning perfectly with God's divine purpose. Doesn't that sound a bit like the story of Joseph from the book of Genesis? Joseph's journey, marked by treacherous pits and the chains of slavery, might have seemed like a million miles away from leadership and purpose. But here's the remarkable thing. Even in the most challenging and unlikely circumstances, God was meticulously crafting His plan. Joseph couldn't have foreseen the incredible ending to his story. But God was orchestrating every detail, even when things appeared impossibly tough. Now, how does this all tie in with the signs God is saying yes to your next decision? Well. Imagine you're facing a big decision in your life, a crossroads, if you will. It could be about your career, a relationship, or a major life change. And here's the kicker. The path forward might seem daunting and uncertain, much like Joseph's early journey. But remember, God specializes in making His presence known in the most unexpected ways. When you're seeking His guidance and wondering if you're on the right track, keep an eye out for those confirming witnesses. It might be a verse from the Bible that speaks directly to your situation, or a sense of profound peace washing over you as you pray. Perhaps a fellow believer unexpectedly offers you a word of encouragement, or a trusted mentor provides you with wise counsel that aligns perfectly with your dilemma. Just as Joseph's life was marked by twists and turns, your life may have its own share of unexpected detours. Yet through it all, God's hand is at work guiding you towards His purpose for your life. These unlikely circumstances you find yourself in might just be His way of confirming that you're on the right path. Have you ever thought about what truly matters in life? What would be the one thing you'd hold on to if you were just minutes away from facing eternity? If you've ever had a near-death experience, your perspective on life will completely shift. At that moment, nothing else will matter to you but one thing, Christ Jesus. In the face of death, you'll realize that amidst all our worldly pursuits and achievements, it's our relationship with Christ made possible by what He did on that cross that holds true significance. Join me as we delve into this profound message and discover the timeless truth of the cross of Christ that has the power to save our souls 
and give us the assurance of life after death. This is a serious message, and God wants you to pay attention. Don't miss any of it. Open your heart to receive this now. You never know what might happen after this moment. In the profound words of Galatians 6.14, we're reminded that our ultimate boast should be in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, But God forbid that I should boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. When faced with the prospect of eternity, all the worldly pursuits and ambitions that consume our lives fade into insignificance. Let us reflect a little on a person who experiences a brush with death, as it offers a striking parallel to our own lives. Consider the business meeting that this man had carefully scheduled for the following week. In the face of his impending death, as his life flashes before him, it becomes an irrelevant and distant afterthought. It loses its value. The pursuit of wealth loses its grip on his thoughts, and even his passion for his favorite basketball team pales in comparison. His cherished home becomes a trivial possession, and even his meticulously planned 401k takes a backseat. Friends, this is a poignant reminder that the things we tirelessly prioritize ultimately hold no weight when confronted with the eternal. Money, material possessions, and even our most cherished accomplishments pale in comparison to the significance of where we'll be spending eternity. The only thing that'll count is the cross of Christ because it'll play a significant role in where we'll be spending eternity. Let us take this lesson to heart, for it applies to each and every one of us. We cannot deny the inevitability of death as it comes for us all, one by one. And when that day arrives, all the temporal pursuits and misplaced priorities that we clung to will vanish into thin air. Deep within ourselves, we recognize this truth. Yet despite this awareness, we often fail to prioritize our relationship with God. In our quest for success, recognition, and worldly achievements, let us not lose sight of the eternal. Let the revelation from this video be a wake-up call, urging us to reconsider our values and recalibrate our priorities. Contemplating the mysteries of the afterlife raises profound questions. What unfolds when our earthly journey concludes? What lies beyond the threshold when we die? Is there a realm called purgatory? Or do we simply slumber until the promised day of resurrection? Hebrews 9.27 provides a resolute answer, stating, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. The Word of God dismisses the notion of purgatory. Instead, it tells us that a divine judgment awaits after our earthly existence. Friends, once we grasp the certainty of this impending judgment, our lives will be forever transformed. The knowledge that a holy and eternal God will meticulously scrutinize every aspect of our lives will compel us to live differently. Do you know that even the very words you utter will be analyzed and reviewed? My dear friend, judgment is imminent. It looms on the horizon. And in this judgment, a single factor will separate the destinies of our souls. We'll look at this factor in a moment. In 1 Corinthians 1.18, we encounter the recurring motif of the cross. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Listen to those words again. The preaching of the cross, that is the cross of Jesus, may appear like foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are saved, it is the power of God. Once again, this symbol of the cross emerges, clearly distinguishing between those on the path of destruction and those on the path of salvation. The cross of Christ is the ultimate catalyst for the forgiveness of our sins. Without what happened on that cross and the resurrection thereafter, there wouldn't have been any salvation for anyone. In Galatians 6, the Apostle Paul's emphatic declaration, God forbid, resounds as a directive to anchor our boast solely in Christ. He beckons us to fix our gaze upon Jesus, to look at the cross, and to place our trust in the author and perfecter of our faith. The cross stands as a beacon of hope, 
a reminder of the immeasurable love and sacrifice that secured our redemption. In our daily lives, we encounter countless distractions and temptations, pulling us away from the profound significance of the cross. We are enticed by the allure of worldly achievements, consumed by the pursuit of personal gain, and entranced by the transitory pleasures of this temporal existence. Yet in the face of eternity, these pursuits pale in comparison to the eternal weight of the cross. The cross becomes the focal point that distinguishes between those perishing and those being saved, serving as the linchpin for the forgiveness of sins. As we navigate life's complexities, the Apostles' Council remains a resolute call to fix our eyes on the transformative power of the cross. Let us reflect upon the truth in these verses as we contemplate the sobering reality of judgment and the transformative power of the cross. First, in a world that constantly vies for our attention, there are a myriad of distractions that seek to divert our gaze from the cross. Society entices us to fixate on our own goodness, urging us to boast in our achievements and self-righteousness. It advocates for self-reliance and a reliance on one's own perceived goodness, perpetuating a skewed perspective that overlooks the deeper truth of our human condition. It whispers in our ears, look at all the good you've done. You are a kind and loving person. You pay your bills, support your community, and care for your family. You are morally upright and law-abiding. You are indeed a good person. This is the prevailing mindset of many in the world, including unbelievers. They fail to recognize their inherent sinfulness and the dire consequences that await them. They fail to see what Romans 3.23 tries to teach us when it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Or when it says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. All have sinned, the Bible tells us. We all inherited the nature of sin from Adam. When Adam sinned, we all sinned. However, the devil deceives people by giving them a false perception to keep them trapped outside salvation until they die and are lost forever. Their understanding of sin is limited to heinous crimes and transgressions. But the gospel message challenges this worldview pointing the accusatory finger at each and every one of us, declaring that we've all fallen short of the glory of the Almighty. The Gospel delivers a direct and blunt message, an unsettling truth that every individual, regardless of societal adherence or personal virtues, is a sinner before a holy God. People recoil from such an unflinching assessment of their moral standing. They would always vehemently reject the notion of being labeled as sinners, instead clinging to the illusion of their own goodness. Consequently, the gospel message becomes offensive and incomprehensible to them, a stumbling block in a sense, because they don't want to embrace the reality of their need for salvation. It's seen as foolishness, an insignificant and irrelevant concept that can be discarded without a second thought. People may find solace in their accomplishments, their charitable acts, and their moral uprightness, believing that these commendable deeds are sufficient to secure their standing with God. They're seduced by the deceptive whisper that the message of the cross is unnecessary, that they can achieve salvation through their own efforts and righteousness. The world echoes this sentiment, perpetuating that lie that the cross holds no relevance in our lives. Yet we must resist succumbing to this falsehood, we must accept the uncomfortable truth that our own goodness is insufficient and that our moral achievements are fading shadows in the face of divine righteousness. Only by humbling ourselves before the cross, acknowledging our desperate need for a Savior, can we truly comprehend the magnitude of God's grace and the redemptive power of Christ's sacrifice. Today, God is speaking to you as you listen to this video. Do not be deceived by the allure of self-righteousness or the persuasive voices of this world. Instead, fix your gaze firmly upon the cross, recognizing it as the pivotal point in your destiny where God's love and justice intersect, resulting to your redemption. The message of the cross may seem foolish to those who are perishing, 
but to you whom God is sending this message to be saved. It should be the embodiment of God's power and wisdom. Another sobering thought is how there are individuals who place unwavering confidence in their own righteousness. These churchgoers become so consumed with their perceived holiness that they believe they deserve a place in heaven. They view themselves as indispensable to the very essence of heaven, boasting to God about their own goodness. However, it's essential to recognize that they've become followers of religion rather than followers of Christ. They've become children of religion rather than children of God. It's worth emphasizing that they're so holy in their own eyes that they boldly boast to God about their self-proclaimed goodness, a perilous path reminiscent of the Pharisee in the parable of Luke 18, 9-14. The Pharisee, standing in the temple, prayed with an air of self-importance, thanking God and arrogantly praying, God, I thank you that I am not as these other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I possess. In stark contrast, the humble tax collector to whom he referred, recognizing his own sinfulness, pleaded for mercy, understanding the vast difference between his fallen state and the holiness of God. Jesus concluded this parable by affirming that the tax collector who humbled himself went home justified rather than the self-righteous Pharisee. Jesus teaches that those who exalt themselves will be humbled, while those who humble themselves will be exalted. Can you imagine having the audacity to step into the presence of the Lord and boast about your own goodness? The Pharisee's pride and self-importance led him to lecture God about his own righteousness. Yet the Apostle Paul reminds us that the only thing we can truly boast about is Christ. Beloved, the Apostle Paul was captivated by the person of Jesus Christ and recognized who Christ is and what he did for us. Christ, the only begotten Son of God, lived a perfect life and became the propitiation for our sins, dying the death of all deaths. This serves as a powerful reminder of the dangers of misplaced focus and self-righteousness. As mentioned before, the world and religion attempt to divert our attention from the cross and entice us to rely on ourselves and our own goodness. However, we must resist those temptations and fix our gaze firmly on the cross. It is through the cross of Jesus Christ that our sins are forgiven, our lives are transformed, and our hope for salvation is secured. Let us never boast in anything else but in the redemptive power of the cross. By embracing this message of the cross, we are liberated from the trappings of self-righteousness and the allure of a religious mindset. Instead, we find true freedom and the path to eternal life in Christ. When faced with the reality of death and judgment, all that matters is holding on to Jesus and the cross. This is a sobering and humbling message, reminding us that death is an appointment we all must keep. The material possessions and earthly accomplishments we may boast about will pale in comparison to the significance of the cross in those final moments. Therefore, let us hold on to Jesus as He holds on to us. In those crucial moments leading up to eternity, the name of Jesus is all that matters. He's the only way to the Father and the gateway to the kingdom of God. Embrace Jesus as your lifeline today so that when the moment comes for you to enter eternity, you'll do so with peace and joy, knowing that your eternity is secured. Were you blessed by this video? Please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more blessed content. Feel free to share your prayer requests in the comments. We'd love to pray with you and join you in faith. Living in a world awash with colors of emotion, it's easy to become entangled in the gales of our feelings. Our emotions are like the weather, ever-changing and unpredictable. They shape our days, color our perceptions, and trigger reactions. Yet, amid this ever-changing weather, there lies a steady, unchanging force, our faith. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. This powerful verse is a reminder from God that our journey is guided by faith, not by the transient nature of our emotions. Yet, 
how easily we drift from this divine guidance as the world pulls us into its tumult of emotional storms. Consider this, when doubts creep in, the shadows of fear cast long across our path, but it's faith that lights the way. When disappointment shrouds our vision, it's faith that helps us to see through to the promise of a new dawn. And when joy fills our hearts, it's faith that keeps us grounded in gratitude. Our emotions are the melody of our life, but faith is the constant, unwavering beat that keeps rhythm amidst the chaos. It's easy to get swept away by emotions, especially in relationships or daily interactions. One moment, a cloud of doubt hovers. In another, a gust of anger blows. And then, a downpour of sadness follows. But faith, faith is the rock amidst this stormy sea providing a safe harbor for our hearts. Take, for example, the decisions we make every day. I don't feel like going to work today, or I don't feel God's presence right now. These are fleeting emotions that attempt to veer us off the course. Yet, when we anchor ourselves in faith, we are reminded of the bigger picture. Our purpose goes beyond the temporary tide of feelings. It's about a higher calling about walking the path God has laid out for us with courage and trust. Our emotions are a part of us, yes, but they are not the captain of our ship. That role belongs to faith. This is the divine compass guiding us through the voyage of life. In relationships too, the whims of emotion may lead to misunderstandings, but faith in God and each other is the glue that mends, the bond that endures, it's the lens that helps us to see beyond the surface, beyond the fleeting, and into the heart of what truly matters. Life is a beautiful, complex melody with high notes of joy and low notes of challenge. Our emotions are the lyrics to this song, ever changing with each beat. But faith, faith is the chorus that resounds with truth, love, and the promise of God's unyielding presence. So, let's step in tune with faith and let it lead the dance through the melody of life, knowing that no matter the tune, God is orchestrating a masterpiece. In a world of fleeting emotions, may we choose to walk by faith, to live by faith, and to love by faith. Emotions, often triggered by the kaleidoscope of life's circumstances, flutter like leaves in the wind. They are the colors of our soul, fleeting and ever-changing. Yet in the divine narrative, we're called to transcend this ephemeral realm and anchor ourselves in the eternal in faith. Reflect upon Abraham's journey. The narrative isn't of a man swayed by the insecurities resonating within, but of a heart tuned to the melody of faith. When promised a lineage despite the barrenness that seemed to be his reality, he didn't succumb to the mocking laughter of doubt. Instead, his faith painted a picture of hope amidst the barren landscape eventually witnessing the promise of a son. Similarly, Gideon's tale was not of might or valor, but of a humble spirit yielding to the divine rhythm. The echoing call to liberate Israel from the clutches of Midianites didn't find resonance in his perceived inadequacy, but in a faith that transcended the mocking giants of doubt. Even the narrative of Christ isn't of a deity disconnected from human emotions, but of divine love embodied in human flesh. His journey wasn't devoid of the human emotional spectrum, yet his steps resonated with the rhythm of faith, transcending the transient to manifest divine love. The tapestry of faith woven through these narratives invites us to a different dance, a dance with the divine amidst the arena of life. It's a rhythm that doesn't sync with the fleeting tunes of our emotions, but resonates with the eternal melody of divine promise. So, as the whirlwinds of emotions swirl around, may we tune our hearts to the divine melody, anchoring ourselves in a faith that navigates through the storms, reaching towards the promise that echoes through eternity. Each stride in faith is a step closer to the divine, a journey not swayed by the fleeting, but inspired by the eternal. The Apostle Paul, through divine revelation, bestowed upon us a profound truth in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, exhorting us to walk by faith 
not by sight. The scripture is not merely a collection of words, but a potent weapon in the hands of believers. It's an invitation to lift our gaze above the seen to the unseen, to the eternal, to the promises of God that are yes and amen. Imagine if we were to live by our emotions solely. Our life's journey would resemble a ship in a violent storm, tossed to and fro by the whims of the sea. But God, in His infinite wisdom, has granted us that shield of faith that can quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Our faith, grounded in the infallible Word of God, provides an unshakable foundation that not even the fiercest emotional storm can shatter. As you journey through life, you may often find your emotions trying to usurp the throne of your heart, attempting to dictate your reality. They may whisper lies veiled as truth, endeavoring to eclipse the light of faith with the shadows of fear and doubt. However, God's clarion call to every believer is to dethrone these transient emotions and enthrone faith, which is grounded in His eternal Word. When we choose to walk by faith, aligning our hearts with God's truth, we transcend the temporary and step into a realm where every promise of God is within reach. This walk of faith may not always be lined with roses, but it's one marked with divine assurance and profound peace. And as you walk this path, you'll find that with each step, the fog of negative emotions will clear, and you'll behold vistas of hope, love, and unyielding joy that is found in a deep, unwavering trust in God. So, in every season of life, let your heart echo the timeless truth. We walk by faith, not by sight and watch as God's peace guards your heart in Christ Jesus amidst every circumstance, come what may. Emotions as visceral as they are often paint our reality with the shades of our own subjective experiences. They veil the divine reality that is unchanging and eternal. The scripture in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 elucidates, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. It's an invitation to look beyond the immediate realm of emotions and to trust in the unseen, the eternal promises of God. Furthermore, emotions may lead us to doubt our worth or God's love in moments of failure or despair. Yet Romans chapter 8, verses 38 through 39 affirmatively declares, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is a powerful reminder to anchor our identity and our journey in the unchanging love of God, not the turbulent sea of emotions. We might not always feel victorious. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 triumphantly proclaims, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Our emotions may waver, but the victory through faith is assured steadfast. As vessels of divine creation, we are endowed with a rich tapestry of emotions. They color our world, adding dimensions of joy, fear, love, and sometimes sorrow. However, when the tides of life become tempestuous, it's essential to anchor ourselves in the unyielding bedrock of faith. Our emotions may echo the circumstances around us, but our faith reflects the indomitable spirit bestowed upon us by the Almighty. Consider a tree standing tall against the ravaging storms. Its leaves, symbolic of our emotions, may quiver, rustle, and some may even take flight with the ferocious winds. However, it's the deep-rooted faith symbolized by the robust trunk and sprawling roots that stands unwavering, providing sanctuary to the weary traveler seeking refuge under its shade. The Lord, in His infinite wisdom, urges us to embrace a faith so profound that it shapes our emotional responses. The world may beckon us to react impulsively to the ebb and flow of life's circumstances, but a heart anchored in faith responds with a calm, assured demeanor, reflecting the tranquility and assurance that comes from placing trust in God's divine plan. It's not about negating emotions, but about mastering them through the lens of faith, thus aligning ourselves more closely with the divine essence within. Our Savior, Jesus Christ was not a stranger to the whirlpool of human emotions. 
He felt anger, sorrow, and grief. Yet he navigated through these tempests with the compass of faith. His life elucidates a journey where faith triumphs emotions, where divine love overpowers early despairs. Titus chapter 1 verse 2 states, In hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. The veracity of God's promise is not a reflection of our emotional state, but a testimony to His unchanging nature. Our feelings are like waves. They ebb and flow. But God's promise is an unshakable rock. As children of God, as stated in Romans chapter 8, verse 16, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are heirs to a legacy of faith, a faith that invites us to look beyond the visible, to tread upon the waters of uncertainty with a heart brimming with divine assurance. Our journey may be speckled with moments of emotional upheavals, but as we anchor our hearts in faith, we align ourselves with the divine narrative, a narrative that echoes the eternal truth of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him amen, unto the glory of God by us. In a world that often urges us to follow the dictates of our hearts, it's a divine call to let faith lead. It's an invitation to let the ephemeral waves of emotions pass and to stand firm on the rock of faith, to let our lives be a living testimony to the world that when faith leads, hope and love prevail. Many people today face different challenges that life throws at them. They're filled with fear and anxiety. They live only for today, not knowing what tomorrow holds. Some have given up on their dreams, their visions and aspirations. Many have resorted to fate instead of faith. What will you do when you face the uncertainties that life brings? What will you do when you're trapped in fear and anxiety? What is the assurance that you will emerge from your current situation stronger and better? Well, the reality of life's pressures and challenges can be daunting, making many of us think there is no more hope. Many have lost the courage to believe their fears can become the thing of the past. They have given in to fear, to depression, and to worry. Take this video as a message from God to you, my friend. Make it personal. I encourage you to take a break, shut out the distractions for the next few minutes, and let God speak to your heart. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. Just remove the distractions and let God talk to you. There is good news for you. Jesus already spoke about you in John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Here we see how Jesus tells us that everything he taught us is so that we can have peace in him which will give us great confidence as we rest. In this unbelieving world, we will experience troubles and sorrows, but we must be courageous. We must be very courageous so that we can stand against the enemy and his oppositions. Do you know that God can turn things around when you trust him? Yeah, God can turn things around for us, his children, when we simply trust in him and rely on his ability to turn bitter experiences into better experiences. He can make the ugly things you're going through into the most beautiful things anyone can ever wish to experience. God is a master at turning a mess into a message for His glory and praise. The test you're going through is preparing you for a great testimony. Sometimes we feel that God has abandoned us. To go through life alone because of pain, failure, lack, suffering, unpaid debts, sleepless nights, and other things we go through. But no, He is right there beside us. He is right in the middle of the storm with us and standing by for us. One time the Lord Almighty spoke through his servant Isaiah about the things the Israelites were going through and his plans for them despite that. Isaiah 43, one through two. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. 
Dear Saint, to trust in the Lord is to absolutely rely on his ability to do what he has promised us in his word. He has reassured us that we should not be afraid. Why? Because he has redeemed us. He has called us by our names. We are his. He will be there with us when we're in over our heads. We will not go down when we're in rough and high waters. It won't be a dead end when we're between a rock and a hard place. Beyond mere words of hope, this is a blessed assurance. The Bible tells us about King David in 1 Samuel 30, 1 through 18. David had lost everything he ever worked for. He had lost his wives as captives to an attacking mob on one fateful day. His followers were discouraged to the extent that they wanted to stone him. They didn't care about the outcome of their actions because they were bitter that they also lost their wives and children. However, David was a man who knew that trusting God meant everything in a person's life. He still encouraged himself in the Lord and inquired of the Lord. What on earth could even make David seek the Lord during this chaos? Trust. David's absolute reliance on God's ability redirected his attention away from the situation at hand to prayer. David got God's backing, pursued his enemies, and recovered all that had been taken. Hear what he said about how he trusted the Lord for direction every morning in Psalm 143, verse 8. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. God delights in turning things around for his children when they come to him, completely trusting in his ability. Do you really trust God to turn things around? Do you trust in his ability to come through for you? Do you have absolute trust that he is on your side to see you through? Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Don't give up. You are just a step away from obedience to the voice of God today. You are closer to staying on course with God, trusting confidently in Him to pull you through than you could ever imagine. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. It's not over until it's over. You've already won. You are a victor. You were declared a winner even before the fight started. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about life. Saturate yourself in prayer each day and offer your faith-filled requests before God with gratitude. Tell God every detail of your life as you approach him in prayer. He knows and he is willing to listen to you. The three Hebrew boys that were thrown into the burning furnace Hannah was childless for several years. Sarah was also childless for many years. The woman with the issue of blood suffered for many years and could not recover. And the wife of the prophet in 2 Kings 4 was terribly indebted. Yet, God turned their situations around for good. He wiped away their tears and put smiles on their faces. He is willing to do the exact same thing with your life right now. Yes, he knows how indebted you are. He sees the pain you're going through right now. He understands the shame you have gone through because of lack. But he still assures us that he will perfect the good work he has begun. Philippians 1 through 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Do you know that trust is a product of our knowledge about God? No one really trusts a stranger. This is because we don't know them, so it makes trusting them difficult. This is true and applicable to God. The more you know God, the easier it is to trust Him, and the simpler it is to rely on Him. How much do you know about God? In the Bible, you will see many examples of people who trusted the Lord with all their hearts, and this simple act of faith became the turning point for them, their families, and all that concerned them. Have you been too concerned about the future and what it holds? God is telling you right now that there is no need to worry because he knows the end from the beginning. Have you given up on your passion and pursuit in life? God is saying don't give up, brace up, for he is right here to help you. All you need to do is to trust him. Instead of focusing on fear and anxiety, redirect your focus to the Lord and watch how he will turn things around for you. 
like he did for David and Hannah. Don't you know that God sides with his children? In fact, if our earthly fathers side with us, how much more will our heavenly father be willing to side with us? He is for us, he's not against us. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas were imprisoned due to a conspiracy by slave owners who used one of their possessed slaves to earn money. Paul and Silas were chained and thrown into the inner part of the prison, but their trust in the Lord redirected their focus from their current situation to the Lord, resulting in prayer and praise. Acts 16, 25 through 26. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Does your current situation look like a prison? God is coming in his mighty power to shake the foundation of that situation. He will set you free. Whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. You cannot be in that prison anymore. All God is requesting from you is to trust him. Yes, it is that simple. Trust him today with all your heart. Wait and just watch how he will turn everything around in your favor. God has chosen you. He's not about to change his mind about you. He is by your side and on your side. Dear child of God, simply trust him. God's word says perfect peace rests on everyone whose hearts are fixed on him. Trust God. Only he can turn seemingly unpleasant situations around. He is dependable, reliable, and trustworthy. You will be glad you made a decision to trust him. Finally, as you trust God, draw close to the Lord in prayer and diligent study of his word. Stand firmly on his promises from his word and pray with these promises. God will reward you with peace, calm, and victory at last. He assures us in Isaiah 43, 19 that, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I believe no matter what you've been through, God can give you a great victory so that your past fades away in the background like it never existed. God is saying your time is coming. Hold on in faith and trust in God. He will give you that victory. Do you ever feel like giving up on your dreams, yourself, and the promise God once told you you'd reach and have? Do you ever wonder if you have what it takes to succeed on this journey? Do you ever find yourself doubting that great future God promised you, wondering if it would come and if you'll have everything it takes to reach it? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you're not alone. Many great Christians whom you may have read of in the Bible or see in modern times struggle with self-confidence and motivation, especially when facing challenges and setbacks that make everything they believe in feel like a lie. However, just like them, you can overcome these obstacles and reach your destiny through the resilience of faith. When we read Romans chapter 4, verse 18 to 21, we see a picture of this in the life of Abraham. It says, Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said unto him. So shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old at that time, and that Sarah's room was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. You may ask, what does this resilience of faith mean? Resilience of faith is the ability of your faith to bounce back from or during adversity and keep moving forward regardless of contradicting circumstances. It's a powerful spiritual quality that allows you to face whatever life throws your way with courage and strong confidence in God, to learn from your setbacks and grow stronger. Do you think you have resilience of faith? Can your faith hold on long enough until your time comes? Can you keep seeing victory up ahead despite being surrounded by defeat and setbacks? You see, 
Resilience of faith is not something you're born with, but something you can develop through practice and perseverance in your walk with God through life's journey. Let me share one of the most inspiring examples of resilience I've ever encountered. This is the story of the life of John Smith. We call him John Smith because he agreed to share his story under the condition of anonymity. So we have to respect that. John Smith is a successful entrepreneur, author, and speaker who has built a multi-million dollar business from scratch. But his journey was not easy or smooth. In fact, he had to overcome many hardships and obstacles along the way. John Smith was born into a poor family in a developing country. He grew up in a slum where he had to work from an early age to help his parents and siblings survive. He didn't have access to quality education, health care, or basic amenities. He faced discrimination, violence, and corruption on a daily basis. He didn't have any role models or mentors to guide or inspire him. John Smith was by himself. But John Smith had a dream. He believed that God placed a vision in his heart and gave him the heart to pursue it with everything he had. He wanted to make a difference in the world. He wanted to create something of value that would help others live better lives. John Smith found that the only way to achieve his dream was through the help of God, education, and hard work. He knew that if he didn't let God lead him, or if he didn't study well and push himself hard, he wouldn't reach the pinnacle of that vision God placed in his heart to one day own a company that would improve the lives of millions worldwide. So he studied hard, despite the lack of resources and opportunities. He kept praying, trusting God, and standing on his word. He read more and more books, watched videos, listened to podcasts, and learned everything he could about business, leadership, and personal development. Despite the lack of support and recognition, John continued to work hard at developing and mastering his skill. He started his first business when he was 16 years old, selling snacks on the street. He saved every penny he earned and reinvested it in his business. Then he expanded his product range, hired employees, and opened new locations. He faced many challenges and risks such as competition, theft, regulations, and taxes. He also met many failures and losses, such as bankruptcy, lawsuits, and fraud. There were days where it seemed like John wasn't making any headway, days when everything seemed to be working against him, but John Smith never gave up. He never lost sight of his vision and his values. He never stopped trusting the Lord. He never stopped learning and improving himself. He never stopped working and innovating. He never stopped believing in himself and his potential, and he believed that one day, everything God told him would come to pass. He believed that his time was coming, and he was determined to wait for it, no matter what. John used every setback as a stepping stone to success. He used every obstacle as an opportunity to grow. He used every criticism as feedback to improve. He used every failure as a lesson to learn. He also used every success as motivation to do more. He used every achievement as a validation of his efforts. He used every compliment as encouragement to continue. He used every milestone as a celebration of his progress. But most of all, he stood on the integrity of God's word as his bridge to his fulfillment. John used every opportunity as a platform to give back to those around him and those he believed God was sending to him. He used every resource as a tool to help others. He used every influence as a responsibility to inspire. Today, John has become one of the most respected and admired entrepreneurs. His businesses span across multiple industries and markets, creating value for millions of customers and stakeholders. His books and speeches have reached millions of readers and listeners, empowering them with knowledge and wisdom. His philanthropy and activism have touched millions of lives, improving them with compassion and generosity. But John Smith is not done yet. He still has many dreams and goals to pursue. He still has many challenges and problems to solve. He still has many opportunities to explore. Although he isn't where God told him yet, 
Even though he appears successful to everyone else, John still lives daily in faith. He believes that his time is coming and he will walk in everything that God ordained for him to walk in. He still has resilience. He still has that faith that keeps him going, whether he wins or loses, rises or falls. But do you know that this resilience of faith is not just the lot of John, but of every child of God? The Bible says that God has given each one of us a measure of faith. Romans chapter 12 verse 3 For by the grace given me I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. This means you also have faith that can develop a resilient quality that keeps you believing, keeps you trusting God, and keeps you seeing that someday your time will come. Beloved, do you know that you have the power to overcome any adversity and achieve any goal? You have the potential to create any value and make any difference. You have the passion to pursue any dream and live any life according to God's will. You just need resilient faith. It will keep you going in the day of challenges. So how do you develop resilient faith? Please remember that resilience of faith is not a destination, but a journey. It's not a trait, but a skill. It's not a gift, but the product of a choice. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Resilience of faith starts with the word of God, but this is not where it ends. To develop the quality of resilience in your faith, you must develop your faith further by constantly trusting God to fulfill his words in your life. This will involve you, just like Abraham in the Bible and John Smith in our story, to engage yourself in what God has placed in your heart. It will require you to keep coming back no matter how many times you fail. This is not just because you are resolved, but because you believe this is what God has called you to pursue. Beloved, God is saying your time has come. In this day and age, when there's so much pressure and disappointment, please remember the words of Jesus in John 14, verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Don't lose your faith. Stand strong. Wake up every day. Go to that office, not because it's the friendliest place but because that is where God has told you to stay and grow. Listen, in this journey of life, those who develop a faith that can bounce back from pressure and keep on going will survive and win. Don't be found missing when your time comes. Stand strong in your faith and keep trusting in God. Your time is coming. Don't give up. As long as God keeps you alive, there's a hope of something coming. Would you miss something so great because of a short season of pain? Paul wrote in Romans 8 verse 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Be reminded that what you're going through today is not worth comparing to what's coming. Stay hopeful, stay trusting, stay with God. Don't let the pressure get to you. Keep doing what God says you should do. Don't let anyone intimidate you with their own success. No, stand strong and stand faithful.